Hey guys, what's happening? So this just came in from China. Actually, it's getting here quicker and quicker. I think this was like less than two weeks now. Um, so it's actually an EC500 Digital Dream. I'm going to replace my NVEM, uh, my Novasun NVME. Um, but what's interesting about this EC500 is it looks different than anyone I've seen before. And I'm going to open up the case so we can take a look at it. And the difference is what I, could, I mean, first, first off, the difference is are, are the uh, input and output LEDs. Yeah, so the original EC500 didn't have that. So I don't know, is this a real digital dream? Or knockoff? I, I don't know, you know. So, um, 460 kilohertz. Um, that's what you could, the step pulse rate. Um, okay, so NV. So I'm actually going to be putting this in my uh, my CNC machine, and I'll show you what that is. So in my old old school uh, CNC machine here, I have a, um, well, originally it just was a mill. I'm actually running an EC300 in this one with the controller. And so the EC500 is just a more powerful, powerful, powerful version of the EC300 in there. Um, I mean, they're basically the same, just have more outputs and a faster processor. But on my CNC router here, which I've made several videos about. Go out of the mess. That's the end right there. Let me put it right there. So it's a much bigger controller, so hopefully I can fit in there. Um, but I got the six axis controller. Um, wasn't that much difference in price. Because like if you if you don't buy the right access count, you know, there's no way to upgrade the access count. It's it's burned onto an EEPROM. So the only way to do that is to you know, you have to buy it from the manufacturer when you buy it. So there's no way to upgrade the access count. Um, actually, I've been trying to hack it for a while. You know, because there is an EEPROM where the serial number and the uh, access count stored. I know this is because I've flashed the processor many times. And the, you know, I went from like Linux CNC back to, you know, Mach 3 firmware. And what's funny is you totally erase the whole processor but then the access count and serial number stays the same. So it's pulling the information from like some external source. And I'll show you where I think it's coming from. I did another video of, of the EC300, you know, but they purposely put an IC on there, an unknown, you know, EEPROM on there, so you can't mess with it. So this is obviously a lot bigger than the NVEM. Um, let's see, this came with a couple 15 pin. I don't like how many outputs are having on that machine. I have three, three outputs. So I have two pumps. I have a water pump, air pump, and uh, output for the uh, uh, output for the uh, spindle on off. Well, I don't go on off. So the cool thing is I'm not gonna have to use this output here, the the 15 DB15 connector. I'm gonna be able to. Um, I can just can't here. It looks like there's multiple outputs here, one through five. So I'm not gonna have to use this. That's cool. So all right, let's get this thing apart. So I'm gonna have to take these things off, and th these just pop off, and then these little screws right here. You know, when you buy stuff from China, you know, you can automatically assume you're not gonna ship it back. I mean, it's it's way more expensive to ship stuff back to China than it's to ship chi ship from China to the U.S. So. So it's just six screws in the back, and you have to take his air standoffs off to get to the board in the front. Yeah, I worked into the mess. I'm fixing like ten different things. So I'm mainly just taking this apart for the Linux CNC form. You know, let's see here. All right. Okay, yeah, this looks totally different than the other one. The uh, EC300. Yeah, because I noticed that I mean, the EC300 had a different processor. Yeah, that's unusual. Um, yeah, this is totally different than the other ones. Even like the NVEM, this is like a whole different processor. I'm going to fire my microscope here and we'll see what's up. I want to see what that processor is. Is that a rock chip or what is it? Yeah, it was, I, I have a feeling that the Linux CNC software probably wouldn't work with this. 
and then maybe there's, I don't know, like, maybe this is the EEPROM right here. Maybe they slipped in the, uh, you know, the problem is what they were doing with the EEPROMs. I think it's the EEPROM. I don't know for sure. It has eight pins on it. What they were doing was, um, um, they were taking the, the label off it so you couldn't figure it was like an unknown EEPROM. So you couldn't figure out what it was. Let's even do, let's just see what the CP looks like. Yeah, this is definitely not an ST Micro or Micro Electro. I come the name of the. Yeah, this is like a. You guys can see that. M I M X R T one zero five two. I mean, is this a knockoff or is this with? I mean, are they having a chip shortage so they had to come out with a different processor? Let's see what that is. If I can see what the model number like that. I don't know. Well, that's not it. That's probably not the prime one, is it? Maybe. No, it's right there. I see. It's exactly like the other one. Um, I mean, I, I guess I, mean, I have to trace it back to the processor, but I don't know if that's a lower cost processor. I'm going to look at the specs on that thing. See what that thing actually is. Yeah, maybe they had a chip shortage or they were just trying to save costs. Um, I wonder if it says what version of... Well, here's what I do know, right? Is that the, the plug-in, there's a version 5 of the plug-in now on, on their site. Digital Dreams site. Yeah, it's a totally different board. Okay, I'm, I'm assuming these are the headers to program the processor. Yeah, I don't think the, the Linux CNC uh, firmware probably wouldn't work with this because it's, it's a different processor. I don't know. Uh, does it say what version of the PCB this is? I feel like this is, I don't know if this is a step down in quality. Or what? Yeah, I'm still looking for the markings on the PCB. Okay, so the information I'm getting about the processor is up here on this computer. And I don't know if it's NC, NXP brand. I mean, usually when I see NXP, I usually see it on the actual chip like that. This one I just see the logo, so I don't know if it's a knockoff of that. Um, it looks like they have their own, you know, programming environment. Um, it's a Core M7 or highest performing Cortex M7. We're um, looking at it right now. 600 megahertz. Hmm. Yeah, I think it was like uh, 60 dollars $60 for the three axis, and then I think I paid ninety for the six axis. Um, either I'm not going to run six axis on that machine. Um, I mean, I probably end up just doing four because I want to do like a indexer, so I can do like a uh, do stuff on there. But yeah, because even on the picture of their website, they don't show this newest version with all the different LEDs. Um, so I don't know if this is like a, a real legit thing or if it's like a knockoff and they try to pull a fast one. I have no idea here. So that's the only uh, part of the any marking that I see on the uh, PCB. It says I am XR underscore EC 500 and the date 2022. Um, so it was made within a, a couple four months ago. All right, so you have your outputs, you have your obviously your output couplers. Um, yeah, well, I'm going to upload this to the Linux CNC forum and see what they think about it. This is this video. So here, what I was talking about with the uh, EC500, I hope you can see it in the picture. Um, if you go to our downloads, um, well, then when you look at it, there's like some kind of, it's hard to kind of figure out option four here. I.O. power is 24 volt power supply input current should be higher than one amp by the IO power supply system already supply the power for IO port so no need to does that mean you no longer have to connect a separate power supply to the IO to feed the for feed the inputs and outputs right here like I know with the EC300 I had to feed um, power to both of those um, oh yeah and then also let me show you the uh, down, software downloads. And actually, I tried to run this version 5 uh, right here. I tried to run that on my EC300. Um, and it actually wouldn't communicate, you know, with, uh, with the device. So, 
Um, and before I even before I put this obviously in my machine and I test it on my my bench test it, because I don't want to tear in the machine and have a non-working uh, device here. So I'm hoping the IP is going to be the same. So I think the default IP range is 192.168.1.x. Um, so I typically would make my machine .10. Um, let me get this back together. Oh, one thing I can say is that this is a huge improvement on these bigger connectors because the NVEM was a nightmare. Again, the, the connectors were so small, you know, if you're using ferrules, it was hard to get them all in place, especially for the stepper drivers. Um, I mean, they did actually make some improvements in the, at least in the EC300, where they can actually, uh, in the NVEM, you had to actually run, if you wanted to use your outputs, you had to use like an external ground. You had a ground that's either to your main ground or to activate the, uh, you know, the internal, I think there's like, a, there's a transistor in there. Optocoupler. Um, no, I don't think there's optocoupler on the outside. Yeah, kind of funny. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I can see this, but see where it says complex and it's a black wire? It automatically makes you think it's a ground. And they're, they're using red for the output, which is the opposite. I mean, that should be black. Should be, I personally think it should be reversed. You know, because this is actually a ground triggered, uh, you know, solid state relay here. I do think it's funny that they're still sending CD-ROMs. Um, I mean, not even hardly any computers have CD-ROMs anymore. All right, so let me show you statically assign your IP 192.168.1.10 slash 24. All right, and then um, let's see if actually this will work with the uh, standard Mach 3 plugin. So this is actually what I use to test my stuff. So I have the Digital Dream, the original version three. I have the Nova Sun plugin. And let's see if it can communicate. Okay, let's see config plugin. Uh, uh, no communication. MV serious. That means basically it's not communicating with the MCU or, or the device. So I'm gonna assume this is the version five controller. Um, Let's look at the the date range here is about the same when the thing was manufactured. Uh, or, and extract it. And, uh, extract. Okay. See in there DLL. Copy. Mach three. Yeah. I was doing a lot of Cisco upgrades, so my stuff is off. PC, C drive, Mach 3, uh, plugin, where is it? Plugins. And then paste. Paste. Okay. Close out Mach 3. Yes, and session. Mach 3 mill again. Okay. Um, that is the new one right there. We'll see if I get communication with this. Yeah, the manual shows the old version of it. So, um, let's see if I can get a communication now. Give it a plug-in. Digital Dream. Nothing. This is kind of why I test this before I actually put them in the machine, because you know, it sucked to have to rewire my whole machine and have to take it out again. What's the com connection? Does that mean it has communication with Mach 3? Don't know. Yeah, the manual is basically useless. Alright, so I'm going to use my advanced IP scanner and see if I can figure out where it's at. And so I'm going to scan the 192.168.1.x network. Now, the manual is so confusing because it almost makes you think that you could dynamically assign an IP address to this device. And I know with the other two, I couldn't do that. So the EC300 and the NVEM. But, um, yeah, like literally, this is like really confusing because it makes you think that you could do like the dynamic. So I just scan my network. And I mean, obviously I see my own laptop, but don't see this device on the 192.168.1.x network. I do actually wonder what this UART is here in the serial port. I wonder if I could actually like, console this device. What's that for? You know, it also would have been nice if they would have had it written down the MAC address somewhere on this device. All right, so actually I forgot that I have several laptops. I forgot this one actually has a CD-ROM. Let's see what's on the CD-ROM. 
Maybe there's a different plug-in. Not sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I do see that they actually sell the EC300 newer version that's similar to this on AliExpress. So, um, yeah, there's like even in the description, there's like no links to like. Um, okay, Mach 3. Also, they're giving you a bootleg license of uh, Mach 3, and. Um, look at the CNT boy. So is this, like, is this like literally like a bootleg version of the Digital Dream? Okay, we had an update from version 2 to version 5. The plugin also cannot... Please, resetting the IP address. Okay, so 192.168.4.x. I mean, that actually is helpful because most uh, home user routers, like default, would be like a, they'd give you a 192.168.1.x. So that could overlap. So they actually should put that in IP range that wouldn't overlap like a home user router. Yeah, this is just the still the old picture though. Okay, 4.10. Alright, so I am getting I know this is 6 access, so that's correct. Um I I'm, I'm assuming I'm not I'm getting the error because of the uh at the e stop I had in this configuration. I'm going to port the pins, that's it, the input signals. Um, there's the e stop. E stop, active low high. So I can't get this thing to go out of e stop mode. Yeah, just in my test environment. So, um, like I said, I want to install this stuff. All right, so I can't get this thing to go out of e-stop mode. So I'm thinking maybe there uh, is a possibly that the, the transistors are not getting power, the input transistors. So maybe that's preventing it. So I'm gonna run a couple of jump of wire from the power source over to the actual I/O ports. But yeah, that that description was weird because these actually aren't getting power. So you either have to run a second power supply or like run a bridge. All right, so I'm still getting. I did birds of wires. I'm getting power to the input circuits, but I'm getting the e stop triggered. So, um, all right, so I got the thing to work on my desk bench here. Still trying to figure out the ports and pins on the input pin signals. I just had to click emulated for the uh, home switches and the e stop. That way, I could at least get it into this mode, so I can actually see if I can. Drive a drive a motor, so I'm gonna hook up my uh, like a test uh, driver and uh, NEMA 17 motor I have here. Another thing I like about these newer newer devices is that um, um, they have a dedicated uh, fight or de dedicated uh, positive. So it's usually ground ground trigger ground pulsed. So they have a dedicated input five volt for the uh, step and direction. So with the NVAM, you actually had to kind of put them two together like that. On a lot of the actual Mach 3 boards, you have to put them together like that. All right, so I have this wired in a little fast. Step, pulse, direction. And uh, I, can't, I can't remember. It doesn't matter what version it is. This is my test one here. Um, let's go back and see if I can go to and move the axis. Nothing. Getting power. This is locked. This is odd. I can't get this thing to any of the access to move. Then like my increment mode, this thing is acting all crazy on me. Try the other plug-in. 
Alright, so I'm still playing with this thing a couple hours later. And so I've downloaded like every single plugin I can get from uh, you know Digital Dream. Now that makes me a little nervous because it says CNC Boy on it. Um, it makes me think that, I mean, this is a dynamic link library file, but maybe they statically programmed the IP, like the new one's 192.168.4.x, whereas the old one was 192.168.1.x, so maybe this is the only, and then this thing is statically programmed to be in the 4 network, right, the 4.x network. Um, so um, that's going to suck if none of these other drivers work because they're, they're looking at the wrong IP range. And only CNC boy, which doesn't work. I'm actually I asked the supplier to give me the the XML file um, to see if that's you know like I said. I don't know. This is pretty annoying though. Yeah, so I've tried every single plugin now, and every one I could find, and I really am suspecting that's the issue, is that only this guy's plugin is pointing to the right IP address. Um. Yeah, and this sort of works because none of the outputs work. Um, they're not being active, so I need to make sure the pins and port numbers are correct. And on the CD, they said they were going to include like the XML file, but it wasn't on there, so I'm asking them for the XML file because I want to see if the manual is different from the, you know, what the XML file is to make it work. So, yeah, I'm assuming now that because none of this stuff actually works, and that's like it's I can't move any access, and none of the outputs work. Like even like when I hit on this. Like normally this MOSFET should be being triggered right now. You know, you have your positive on your on your common 24 volt. And it's being ground triggered. And I'm not getting any sort of output. I've tried my multimeter. I know it's been active, so. Um pretty frustrating. Alright, turn that off. Alright, so I've actually had it with this uh version five of this EC five hundred. Um I don't know if it's the February's crop did. Um, it partially works because I'm getting a serial number here. Show that. And no, outer, no motor output. I've tried actually multiple plugins. So this is the only actually plugin that I can get that actually came with it that actually shows the serial number information. Um, there actually is that they all partially work. Um, so I've actually talked to a few different people online and um, yeah, they're having all kinds of issues too. So, um, yeah, they can't get theirs to work right. Their, their uh, humming or the sensors, like the proximity sensors, don't work right. Um, for me, um, I can't get any outputs. I can't get any output or motor control here or here. So right now I decided I was going to try to trigger a MOSFET just to, uh, on a spindle. You know, when I turn my spindle on, that MOSFET should turn on. Just as a test, because normally I have a VFD. But... Um, but the unique thing here is, check a look, the inputs actually work. So let's look at probe in. I'll take this yellow wire. So on this actual one, that's a ground trigger. So it's expecting ground in return. Um, just going to poke it in there like that. Now watch. So the only thing that actually works are the inputs. So I am, I don't know what's going on here. I mean, I don't know if that is the plugin or the firmware because it's partially communicating with the processor. So obviously, Ethernet works. I'm able to ping it. It's, I'm, I'm getting a connectivity light, but no output, no motor control. But I also hooked up my multimeter, and normally you should get on the on the pulse positive and pulse negative. Normally, at least on my other controllers and every single one I've ever met, played with, uh, I, get, I should get five volts. But on this one, I'm only getting 3.1 volt. So I don't know if there's a bad voltage regulator. So I, I tracked this back down as being the voltage regulator. So I'm talking with the guy on Express right now. I'm actually asking him for a refund or partial refund. I, this thing's useless. It's cost me 100, 115 bucks or whatever, 116, and uh, I can't even use it. So I mean, it's I don't I, I don't know what the likelihood of getting a refund for this would be because it's in China, and it's not really worth shipping it back because if the shipping is 30 bucks. I don't know, man. So, yeah, these version 5 controllers, man, they got to sort out these bugs before they ship them out, man. Uh, this has cost me hours and hours and hours of troubleshooting. I mean, it's fun for me to troubleshoot and everything. I like doing this, but not when I just... <laughs> I got everything I got to fix, too. You know, I can't sit there and spend additional four or five hours troubleshooting a card that should work. 
because if they would have sent me the old version, the version three, I would have been, I would have been, I wouldn't, wouldn't be doing this right now probably. But every version of five guys I've talked to so far has had problems. Uh, all right, guys. All right, if you're, if you see this on AliExpress, or the one with the extra LEDs, if you see this one on AliExpress, um, or Amazon, definitely beware. No doubt, beware.